Okay, so I have my paper. It is taped down. This is our reference photo here. Um, I just printed this out so that I would have it in front of me. Um, this is a landscape from Yorkshire in the UK from when I was there in July. So this is a fun, um, this is a fun little landscape painting that we're going to be doing. And then uh, I've got my watercolors here. I've got a couple of brushes. I almost knocked that whole thing over. I've got these smaller brushes, and then I've got a bigger one in my cup already that I'll be using. Um, and I'll go through my art, my the brands of the art supplies real quick. This is Strathmore watercolor paper. This is good if you're a beginner. Um, it's really, it's pretty cheap, so you can find it in any art store, and it's not too, it won't break the bank. So um, if you're looking for some watercolor paper to start out, this is a good brand, Strathmore. Uh, my watercolor paints are Windsor and Newton. So you can check those out if you want. These are professional watercolor paints, so they are a little bit more expensive. You do not need expensive watercolor paints to paint along with me. And then my brushes are Princeton Neptune. So all of my art supplies, this stuff, and then everything that I've tried before and that I would recommend is um, available in my bio. There's a link in there that's called Art Supply Recommendations, and that'll take you to my Amazon storefront where I have all of my art supply recommendations. And it helps me because I get a little commission off of that too. Okay, so um, like I said before, we're gonna have our paper here in the horizontal position, so the landscape position. We're gonna do a little bit of sketching out this, um, this reference photo here because we have some geometric squares of these farmlands back here um, that we will want to sketch out and where the trees go and all that stuff, um, and then we'll get into the painting. So grab a pencil if you don't have one already. And the first thing, you can also screenshot this reference photo if you'd like to have it on your phone. Yes, I do post the lives on my YouTube channel. So the first thing that we need is this horizon line. So we can see where the land meets the sky back here. This is about probably a little under halfway um, up the paper. So we're gonna put that in. This is just gonna be a wavy line. Doesn't need to be completely straight across our paper like that. Okay, and then we've got some other land that's kind of in the distance here, so we might do a few little lines, another kind of wavy line right under this first one that we made. So maybe this one will go like that. I don't know. Okay, and then we're gonna draw out these clumps of trees. So we have one big kind of clump of trees here and then one big clump of trees here. So we're just gonna draw those out now. So let's start with this one. This line of trees comes down um, towards the center of the paper. This is about halfway across the center of the paper, long ways. And that just goes something like that. And then we can kind of add the fluffy shapes of the trees on top. Doesn't need to look like anything right now. This will be watercolor paints. And yes, this gets uploaded to my YouTube channel, linked to my bio. This one and all the previous lessons that I've done are all in there too. So you can go subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, so help me out. Okay, so there's that first closer up clump of trees and then we've got this one that's further away. Now the line of trees here goes facing up a little bit more. So we wanna angle this bottom part up and then draw those fluffy parts in. So that's gonna go like this, and then draw in those trees. So very simple shapes, nothing super complicated here. Okay, so that's what we have so far. And this is just going to inform how we paint this. This is not like the final shapes of all of these things. We just want to kind of know where these things are going to go if that makes sense. Okay, now in the background here, we want to have some of these um, squares. This is what kind of makes it look like farmland. So we have one line here that connects those two clumps of trees that we just drew. And then we're just going to um, put in a few of these lines, add in some rectangles. You don't need to copy this reference photo exactly. Um, just add in some rectangles in the distance here. So we have one line that goes across here between those two clumps of trees. And then maybe we've got one that goes up like this, a rectangle there, maybe another rectangle there, 
Yeah, I think that looks good. So just a couple rectangles. And then we'll add some trees into those later. We don't need to draw those out. Okay, so I hope that made sense. This is all we need to draw out right now. Um, and then we're going to paint on top of this. Okay. So now we are going to get into our painting. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is put a little drop of water into each of our watercolor pans. Um, this just helps to dissolve that paint. It gets it ready for us to mix with. It's very hard to pick up dry watercolor paint. So we're going to wet it first. Um, and while we're doing this, just this is just a reminder that I always give um, when we start out our paintings. This is all just for fun. We are all here to just paint together and hopefully I'll, uh, you'll learn something and you know enjoy the process. Don't worry about the um, outcome, especially if you're a beginner artist. It does not need to be a masterpiece. We are just here to paint and learn and have fun. So try and keep that pressure off yourself of, of um, you know, making a fantastic painting because we're only painting for an hour. So don't worry about it too much, okay? Um, now, for this sky, we've got, you can see here, we've got some clouds and we've got some blue sky. We're not gonna go in and paint very detailed clouds in here. We're gonna do a wet on wet technique, which is gonna give us some very loose clouds. And we're gonna have that be kind of the background. And then we're gonna focus more of our attention onto the foreground here. So um, for this, we need two colors. We need a sky blue and a gray. So use whatever blues you have in your palette, mix up something that looks like a sky blue to you. And then do the same thing with gray. If you have gray in your palette, go ahead and use that. If you just have black, you can use that and mix maybe a little blue into it. But we just need two colors, blue and gray, and mix those up. And I can swatch those for you too. They don't have to match mine exactly. Use whatever, whatever color um, your heart desires. So there's that gray and there's that blue. And also while we're doing this, if you guys want to double tap the screen, that sends me likes and it helps me out with the TikTok al algorithm. It, um, you know, pushes this live out to more people, which is always appreciated. And it's fun to see how high up we can get that like number to go. All right, so for the sky section, we're gonna be doing a wet on wet technique, which means we're gonna put water down on the whole sky section, water from our cup, and then we're gonna drop in that blue and that gray color. So, um, uh, I will do it first, and then I can give you time to do it after me if you don't know what we're doing. If you do know, go ahead and do it. So I'm going to take my brush and cover the entire sky section with a layer of water. Make sure you tilt your head. That lets the light reflect off of the paper. And you can see if you've missed any spots. And just go all the way down to that land section. You can overlap it a little bit if you want. There we go. And then once your paper is fully covered in water, you can start with either the blue or the gray, up to you. And we're just gonna start putting in some shapes. Um, it does not need to really look like anything. I would just suggest that you give it some movement, be brave and just, you know, put some color in there. It doesn't need to look like anything in particular. Once you've put in the, the blue, you can switch to your gray or vice versa if you started with the gray. And make sure we're leaving a few white spots in here as well. We want some highlights on these clouds, and we do that by leaving a few white spots. And I'm also kind of fading this out as I get down toward the bottom here. Okay, so there, that's a very easy wet on wet sky. You can leave it like this to dry if you want to, or you can tilt your paper. This will make all of that color run around. and it'll kind of blend it all together really nice and softly. Look at that, we're already up to 11,000 likes. That's awesome, you guys. So, and then once you're happy with the blend that you've gotten, you can just let it sit flat and that'll stop the blending. And one more option that you have is if you've lost those highlights, those white spots, you can take a dry brush, so dry it all the way off in your paper towel. And while it's still wet, you can pick up some of that extra color 
and you can add those highlights back in. So I just recommend bouncing your brush around, making those kind of fluffy shapes. It'll look like clouds that are sitting there. Okay, so those are two options for you, tilting it and also using a dry brush to pick up some of those highlights. As we're going through this too, I will try to answer questions. Um, I do have to paint and talk at the same time, so sometimes I can't get to them, but if you have art-related questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. Okay, so there's our sky. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone, and it's gonna dry. How often do you do these? I do this every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Most of the time, sometimes I'm out of town, so <laughs> sometimes I don't. I don't know how you can pick up color. So like I said before, you take your paintbrush and while your painting is still wet, you dry off your brush all the way and then you just touch it to the paint and that will suck it up into the brush. You can only do that while the painting is still wet though. Once it's dry, it's, it's dry. You can't pick it up anymore. So I really like these little textures there that that dry brush kind of creates for me. Yep, this is watercolor. This is Strathmore watercolor paper and my paints are Windsor Newton. Okay, how's that going for everybody? If you're painting with me, let me know where you're at in the comments. If you need another minute or two, I'd be happy to give you another minute or if you're ready to move on, let me know. And if you've got any art related questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. Do you erase the pencil after? Nope, I don't. Um, this is a dark enough painting and we've got some stuff that's going in these pencil lines that I don't really need to. We, we shouldn't be able to see them when we're done. Um, but sometimes if, I'm, if I know it's a lighter subject, then I will erase lightly with my kneaded eraser here that you can see that kind of lightens up the pencil there. Um, and that helps to not have that pencil show through at the end. How many brushes do you use or need? Um, I usually use like two to three brushes per painting. It depends on how big it is. Are all your lives uploaded to YouTube? Yep. Can a beginner do this? Absolutely. Where did you get your paint palette? The art store, uh, my local art store. Would this work with gouache as well? Yep. You just have to change a few of my instructions here, but um, yes, this would definitely work with gouache. I messed it up. No, you didn't. <laughs> You're still in step one. Wait until the final step to say that you've messed it up. Watercolor is all about digging yourself out from the ugly stage, I promise. What kind of eraser was that? Yeah, it's a kneaded eraser, so it's kind of like putty, um, and it kind of, you just kind of knead it up like this, and then you touch it to the pencil, and it lifts up the graphite instead of a regular eraser where you scrub it around. You just touch and lift up, and that helps to kind of lightly erase your um, pencil. How soon will this be on YouTube? It'll be on there tomorrow. Can you use watercolor on canvas? Uh, you can, it'll look a little bit different, but um, you definitely can, and I would recommend you experiment with that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Um, so, we're going to start with the land section now, and we're gonna work from back to front for the most part. So we're gonna fill in this, you can see there's some very light, uh, or some darker blue land in the back here, kind of blending into brown and green, and then we'll fill in our rectangles in the back there, and then just keep working forward, okay? So let's do a couple of colors. We need a slightly darker blue than what we just used for the sky here. So what I'm gonna do is take some blue and just mix a touch of brown into it. And this will kind of make it a little bit darker and a little bit more earthy because this is just like, this is far away land that we want this to be. So it'll be kind of a gray color. Still want it to look blue though. I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly. Just kind of a dark blue. And then we also want to mix together a dark green. So I'm going to use this gray that I had already and I'm just going to mix some green into it. Maybe mix some blue and green together. We just want a dark green. So kind of a blue gray and a dark green. Those are the colors we're mixing up right now. Okay. 
So there's our dark green. I didn't have enough on my brush there. There we go. Dark green. And that dark bluish gray. Those are two colors. So because we're painting something that's in the distance, we want these kind of darker, more muted colors for this here. Okay. Paints are Windsor and Newton, watercolor paints. Again, all of my art supply recommendations, everything that I've ever used is linked in my bio. There's a tab in there called art supply recommendations. Okay, so with these two colors, we are just gonna fill in above the trees and the land area that we've um, kind of carved out. I'll show you up close here. So everything above this line right here, we're gonna fill in. So below this line and above this line, it's not very much. <laughs> And we're just going to start filling that in. So I'm going to start with the blue. And you're going to use that blue to carve out the horizon line here. Feel free to add some texture and um, make that horizon line not super straight. And we'll just go, I'm going to go like halfway across so that it doesn't dry on me. And switch to my green and drop some green in there as well. So when we do this, we should have those green, that green and that blue kind of blend together because we're putting them in there at about the same time. Switch back to my blue. Continue going across, painting around those trees that we drew out in our sketch. There we go. So there's that distant land there. So that's where we're at right now. Can you talk about water control because your colors look thicker and darker in some areas? Um, well, that part is not really under my control. That is just the watercolor effect and it's something that you have to practice with um, and why watercolor does take some practice and some uh, zen, I guess, because it just take you, you don't have a whole lot of control over what's happening here. I've been painting since I was a young child. Do you think the Koi watercolor palette is good? Yep, I do. I've got that in my art supply recommendations too. I used that for a long time when I was younger. Okay. So our next step is going to be to fill in these uh, rectangles back here. And you can see that there's a couple of color options that we have. We have this like kind of brown, golden brown color um, that we can use. We can also fill it in with green. So feel free to not copy the reference photo if you wanna put some different colors into these rectangles back here. You are welcome to, it does not need to match this exactly. I'm going to do, we're gonna to mix together kind of a lighter green. So mix together green and yellow. That'll get you a nice lighter green. And then for that kind of dead grass color, I'm gonna use yellow ochre, maybe a touch of brown into that. And that'll give me a nice dead grass color. <laughs> okay, so once you have those two colors, feel free to just fill in those um, rectangles in whatever way that you wish. Keep in mind that if you fill in adjacent ones, they could, the colors could bleed into each other. That is definitely an effect that you can just go for. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't want the colors to bleed in together, then kind of alternate rectangles so that you're not touching the, you let the, the color dry before you go to the next one. How do you know all the color names? I've been painting for a long time. <laughs> do you clean your brush in between dipping to a new color or no? Sometimes. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. It depends on the colors. Okay, so I'm filling in my other rectangles here. There we go. Oh, I have one more. One more in the front here. Okay. 
There we go. How long have you done art? Since I was a young child. It's the hardest painting you've done. I don't know if I... I don't know if I have, like, one in mind that I can tell you. I think they're all hard <laughs> in their own way. Yeah. Okay, there we go. For details and control, is it better wet on dry? Yep, it is. Yeah, it's um, it's in Yorkshire. It's um, outside of Malton. Okay. So now that we have our uh, background laid out, it's time for the foreground. And I forgot one other pencil line that we need to add in, which is um, this kind of dividing line between the end of these trees and over here. Um, to the right. We're not going to paint this whole shadow in here. We're going to pretend that that doesn't exist. We're going to put all of this in sunlight pretty much. So we need one more line from the corner of these trees here to the edge of the paper for our last rectangle. Okay. And then we're going to fill in the grass in these two sections here. So this one is really, really light, really light greenish yellow. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to fill this one in with just a regular kind of grass green. Okay. So super light greenish yellow. So I'm going to mix together yellow and just a touch of green. Um, and then we're going to add a bunch of water to that so that it's a nice light color. In watercolor, we don't generally add white to lighten our colors. We use water so that it's a really translucent color. And that way we can um, have the paper shining through as the light source and it gives it a nice effect. So once you've mixed up your really light yellowish green, we're just going to fill in this section on the left. We're just in the color blocking stages right now. So we're just filling in everything with blocks of color and then we'll go in and add some details later once it's dry. Okay, so there's that really nice light green. And then for this last section here, this biggest section, um, just mix up whatever kind of grass green that you want. Just kind of a mid-tone green. I really like mixing different colors into my greens and not just using um, what's coming out of the palette. That helps me get some color variety. And it makes it so that we can use lots of different greens on this um, painting and they don't all look the same. Okay, so there's my green. Another fun thing you can do while you're filling this in is just take some raw color from the palette and as we're filling it in just drop that in some places. So I might take some yellow ochre just on my brush and drop that in and kind of follow the contours of the land and that just gives you a little bit of color variation in there. Um, and a little bit of interest, especially in this foreground area. You can do the same with blue, um, brown, whatever colors you want. So feel free to experiment with that. Here's some blue that I might drop in there. Again, following the contours of the land here, not just like scrubbing randomly. You wanna do it somewhat intentionally. Finish up filling this in. Almost out of paint. Okay, there we go. What do you do when you mess up? You just keep going. And you know, sometimes sometimes if you mess up, it it you know, once you're done with the painting, you're like, yeah, that was kind of a that kind of ruined the painting. But a lot of times, if you mess up in the kind of in the mid stages or like where we are now, um, you 
might think that you've messed up the entire painting, but really you just have to keep going and dig it out of the ugly stage and it will be much better. So that's my recommendation to you guys is to keep pushing past the ugly stage. I think it kind of deters some people from really pursuing art because you get to a point kind of halfway through the painting where it looks really ugly and you're like, I, I've messed this up. It's, it's, it's not worth doing this anymore, but you really just have to kind of keep going with it. This doesn't, I mean, this doesn't look like anything right now, but you have to kind of keep going. How come it doesn't bleed into each other? Um, well, I've got a fan going in here, so this dried really quickly. The colors are drying pretty quickly for me. Um, so it just kind of depends on the airflow and the humidity in your place. Thank you. The clouds are beautiful. How did you do them? This whole thing is going to be is recorded and will be uploaded to my YouTube. So if you'd like to see those clouds later, you can check out my YouTube channel, which is in my bio. I'd also like to say, if you're enjoying this um, session today, my Venmo is listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio. So if you'd like to leave me a tip or a gift for um, leading today's lesson, that is always appreciated. Anything that you would like to give is totally fine. I also like those little um, within TikTok, like tokens and stuff like that. Those are fun. So feel free to do that. Some of my favorite pieces look rough until close to the end. Yes, absolutely. 30,000, that's awesome, you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, so our last little thing that we need to block in are these trees. So for this, we want um, a little bit more of a yellowish green. So we can see here, this tint is a little bit more of a yellowish green here. And then maybe, yeah, same thing for these. We'll add some shadows to them later, but we're just gonna block them in right now. So I think I'm gonna do yellow ochre, which is kind of a yellowish orange, if I haven't explained that already, and some green. And that will give me a yellowish, maybe some brown too, a yellowish tinted green, which will be the one that we want to use for blocking in these trees. So mix some of that up. I'll swatch that for you too. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I always fall asleep to Bob Ross, so that's good that people enjoy this for that too. Okay, so once you have your yellowish green color, just go ahead and fill in those tree sections. Just a flat wash. Another thing that I'll mention is that my Etsy store is linked in my bio as well. So if you'd like to check out the art that I sell on a regular basis, um, you can do that. Again, it's linked in my bio. I did just release some new fall things and I haven't posted about it yet. Um, and so if you want first access at some of my new fall things, make sure you check that out um, today and maybe order something for yourself if you want to, because once I post about it, usually things sell pretty fast. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. I bought your prog print, love it. Oh, that's wonderful, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, so there we go. We've got our painting all filled in. This is not the final stage. <laughs> we still have lots of details to put in here for it to look regular. Um, do you have good tips or advice for beginners? My general advice that I give almost every time is um, that Art requires that you make a lot of mistakes and that you make a lot of bad paintings. So as you're a beginner, um, try to just paint and enjoy it for the process. Don't try to, um, don't feel like you need to make a masterpiece when you're just starting out. It is very hard um, and art is, you know, art is hard and it's a skill that needs to be developed. So don't give up, you know, right away if you can't make paintings that you're super happy with right away. Just try to enjoy the process. Yeah, let's get to 40,000, guys. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get started with some of these details. And in the distance, if you can see here, we've got these kind of darker sort of shrubs, bushes that line these rectangles. So we're gonna put um, a darker green in between, kind of outlining all these rectangles. We might also dot a few of these little random trees in there with that color too. You can see that there's some random trees kind of sticking up everywhere, so. Let's mix up a nice dark green. So I'm gonna to mix together green, blue, and brown. 
that will give me a really nice vibrant dark green. Green, blue, and brown, kind of equal parts, I would say. Maybe a little bit less brown. And then once you have that color, I'm using uh, my smallest brush, my detail brush. And I'm just gonna do basically, I'm just gonna kind of dot along each of these little division lines between those rectangles that we painted earlier. We don't want like super straight lines. We want these to look a little bit more organic because they are bushes. So I'm just basically putting a bunch of dots right next to each other. And that's the, that's the texture we're going for. My tapping finger is slowing down. Okay, and then we can do these in the distance as well. I think this detail kind of pulls together that farmland look in the distance. Okay, there we go. Yay, we got to 40, good job guys. Okay, and then with this dark color, we can also add just some little random trees in here. So those are just kind of irregular dots. We might put around, maybe a few, I don't know, kind of like that. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right, so that's where we are at now. Um, last few details, we're kind of getting close here, um, <laughs> soldiers, um, we're kind of getting close here. So the last few things that we'll need to do, um, I think we'll add a fence in the foreground here. We'll need a division line between these two spots here, and then we need some, uh, texture and shadows in the trees. So let's go with the trees first. So for the trees, we're gonna use a very similar color to this dark green. So I'll just recommend you mix a little bit more of it. Make sure it's nice and dark. And I'm switching to my slightly larger brush here. And we are just gonna start at the bottom and add the shadow for sure at the bottom. And then just kind of start dotting its way upwards. And the, the sun is coming from the right. And so our shadows should kind of curve to the left. That makes sense. Um, and we're just gonna do a bunch of dots and that will look like distant trees without having to put too much effort in. So hopefully that makes sense. So shadow all along the bottom and then um, kind of dotted up upwards and around to the left where that shadow would be. Don't make it too perfect. Just kind of let it go where it wants to go. We can keep layering colors on there. If you don't feel like those shadows are quite dark enough, you can maybe change up that darker color, adding one, one color more than another and add a little bit more in there as it dries if you want a little bit more texture. Add some really tiny dots in there too, if you want to. And that should be good. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing to these trees here. So dark color, making that shadow go along the bottom and then curving up around the left side. Okay. 
How's this going for everybody? How's everyone doing? We're at 50. Good job, soldiers. You guys are doing great. And I do random dots today and I'm like explosive diarrhea. It just takes practice, I promise. Not quite 60k yet. It's 50k, looks like. Thank you. If you're just dropping in, this is a paint and sip. I'm leading people through a watercolor painting. I do these every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I have a few dots suddenly, 3D trees appear. Yeah, that's the fun part about art. You can kind of make things out of nothing if you know these little tricks of shadows and color and all that stuff. It doesn't take very long to kind of start figuring that out. having a good time watching you. Yep, I'm from America. I grew up in Seattle, Washington, and I live in Cincinnati right now. Okay. Here we go. These are some good trees. I think that looks good. Might add a few more details to that later in a similar fashion but I think I'll leave that alone for now. Do you ship to Europe? Uh, yes, I do. Some things I don't just because I've had experiences with things getting lost, but for the most part, yes, I do ship to Europe. So make sure you check out my store. There we go. There's our trees. So we're really getting to the end of this. Hi from England, this is comforting. Wonderful. This is from Yorkshire, so you should feel right at home. Do you sell or keep? I sell most of my paintings, um, or at least put them up for sale. Some of them I don't end up selling, or they take a while to sell, so I get to keep them for a while, but um, yeah, I sell most of my paintings. Okay, so for this um, dividing line here, I think we're just going to do some grass. So in here we can see it's pretty light, colored grass. Um, I think we might darken that up just a little bit, but for the most part, just a little bit of grass. I'm from Yorkshire. Wonderful. I went to a wedding in, this was um, in Deepdale, I think it was, Deepdale Farmhouse, outside of Malton. And that was in July, so that's where this reference photo is from. So let's just grab some more green, shocker. Um, just kind of a medium grassy green. And I'm gonna use my smaller brush and just start adding some grass along the borderline here. Um, the grass should be taller um, towards the left side of this painting here and it should be shorter as we work toward the middle because that's further away. So make sure we pay attention to the size of the grass and just start cutting it down as we work um, our way across. And the key to grass is having a nice small brush for sure, and also um, making sure we're adding varied paint strokes. So we don't want the grass to all go the same way, it'll end up looking like hair. So you want it to kind of cross over itself, have some thicker and some thinner, have some like broken, um, just all different directions, all different weights, all that stuff. So we want to make sure we vary our brush strokes when we're doing this. And that should help it not look like hair. And as you can see here, as we're getting towards the um, trees over here, I'm just making this shorter and shorter, and that gives us the perspective that it's getting further away. Just like that. The name of the paint set, it's Windsor and Newton. Maybe add a couple of taller strands of grass kind of growing in here. A few kind of curved over. It's always a good, a good move. And then we can use a darker green if you want to just add a little bit of shadow to this. So we'll use the darker green, kind of go over the top. 
at the base of the grass, add a little bit of texture with that darker green. That'll just give us a little bit of a shadow. I'll show that closer up. Are your Etsy paintings prints or originals? I sell both. So I do have prints of things that I make myself, and then I do have um, lots of originals up there too. So this is what I'm doing with that dark green, just adding some shorter strands um, and some shadow at the base of the grass. Kind of like that. And again, just my, I gotta plug all my stuff here. Um, I've got my YouTube channel linked in my bio, so if you'd like to check out my YouTube videos and also these paint and sips that I upload, um, Yes, this one will be uploaded tomorrow, most likely, tonight, if I'm feeling extra on it. Um, I've got my Etsy shop linked in my bio as well, so if you'd like to check out my paintings, like I said before, I've got some new fall paintings that have not been promoted yet, so if you want to check those out before everybody else gets their hands on them, you can check those out. I've got some new bookmarks. I've got more fall stuff coming, but the first kind of drop was today. Um, and you can also, if you enjoyed this session, Venmo me um, a little tip or a gift, or you can use PayPal, which is linked to my bio as well. What is your YouTube channel named? I believe it's just my first and last name, which is Hannah Pickerel, but the channel is linked in my bio, so you can find it there without having to type my name in. Okay, so there's our grass, and I think we've just got one more detail, which is to add a fence, which is always very fun. So... Let's mix up some brown. I like to do brown mixed with blue, which kind of neutralizes it a little bit, makes it a little bit more of a, almost gray, more of a natural color. And once you've got that mixed up, we're gonna do a pretty loose fence. It's not gonna be too detailed here. We're gonna draw in some fence posts first, and then we're gonna connect the dots. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one right here. One right here. It's fun to kind of make them leaning slightly in different directions. Maybe these will go all the way down there so it looks like it's kind of going up that way. There we go, okay, there's our fence posts. And then, I see some questions here. How long have you had that palette? I've had it for about two years, I think. I refill the colors as they run out. Do you do any acrylic painting classes? No, I don't. Do you wash your case after painting? Yep, of course. Um, I haven't been on your live in like 20 minutes and it progressed beautifully. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, so once you've got your fence post there, just take your paint and connect. Connect the dots. And there's our fence. Did you put fresh paint in this palette each time? Nope, just when the um, just when the paint runs out. So you can see, like, I'm almost out of the red here, so I'll probably refill that soon, and then I just refill them as they need it. Okay. Now, you can just leave the fence like that if you want, or if you want to be extra um, diligent, we can add a little shadow underneath and to the left. So see if you can make an even darker color. So you want it to be a little bit more concentrated and use a small brush and just put in a line on the left side of each of these fence posts and on the underside of the horizontal ones. Up to you, this is optional, but just help. 
helps to be extra diligent. And then we get to take off the tape. So if you stuck around, you get the reward of seeing the tape reveal. Where do you get the refill paint? I get it at the art store. They sell online and in person, they sell the um, paint in tube form. And so I just get a tube of the paint that I am out of, and that will refill that little palette there three or four times. So it's a good deal. Okay. There we go. There's our little painting. Time to take off the tape. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. Art stores are so expensive. Art is an expensive hobby, I will say that. Um, but most hobbies do cost you money, so. And this is my job. But there are good ways to kind of save money on art supplies. I just made my bad painting. Great, good job. You can't make good paintings if you don't make bad paintings. Very satisfying. Make sure to sign your painting as well. It's always good to make sure you put your signature on it. I always like to put the date on my painting as well so that I can look back and see when I painted it and see my progress. What type of tape? It is scotch tape. It's just um, scotch tape from the hardware store, painter's tape. There we go. Nice and crispy, yeah. Okay. Let me sign my painting. Where's my pen? There it is. Sign my painting down here. And the date. What is the date today? Is it the 10th? I think it is. 10, and this is paint and sip number 71. There we go. I sell these paint and sip paintings um, 10 at a time. So the previous 10 are on um, my Etsy shop as well. Do you reuse your tape? Sometimes, not very often. It loses its um, straight edge first time. There's our final painting.